on this edition of Titans All Access. It's time for Week 17. Everything is on the line for the Titans in Houston. General Manager John Robinson provides the keys to the Titans getting a win in the Lone Star State. Mike Keith sits down with big play linebacker Jayon Brown for the Nissan Insider. The Titans scored two touchdowns Sunday on plays that were off schedule. We'll go beneath the surface with Coach Mack and find out how they did it. When I say Tannehill, you think about Ryan, the Titans starting quarterback. We'll introduce you to another outstanding Tannehill and numerous Titans who are making a difference in the community here in December. You'll see them all and a lot more on Titans All Access, which starts right now. I hop in the coop and don't got no roof. Pull up with my dogs. If you bite, they go roof. Look at you, look at you. Nobody bang with you. All of them rookies. That's a dude you can't handle. Big man, I'm big bitch. You big man, I'm big bitch. You big man, I'm big bitch. Pull up fast with my kick. Yeah. He's in trouble. He's sad. Taken down by Wesley Woodyard. 69 yards. Derek Henry. Touchdown. Touchdown. Tight. Tennessee will not go quietly. Throw your hands up in the sky. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and you know what this is about. Win and you're in. Absolutely. The Titans head to Houston to play this Sunday. And if the Titans knock off the Texans, they go to the AFC playoffs as the number six seed. So for the third year in a row, the Titans are going to play a win and you're in game in week 17. Now we need to tell everybody what time this starts because it's a change. It is a change. It has been moved. It is at 325 p.m. 325 p.m. Central. Yes. 325 Central. Titans Radio is on the air at 2.30 Central with Titans Countdown, so you'll be able to join us for that. But it's a big one, and we're already kind of nervous. Oh, absolutely, but nervous excited. It's nervous excited. It's a good thing. This is the type of week you need your best players to come through, guys like uh, Jayon Brown. Well, and Jayon Brown is good at Week 17 matchups. Absolutely. Last year against Indianapolis in the win in your end game, Jayon Brown with that big interception of Andrew Luck that he ran back for a touchdown and got the Titans right back into the game. Well, Andrew, remember that fumble? He did. He had the strip and the recovery. A great play by Jayon Brown having another great year. And this is a guy who was not a major prospect coming out of high school. No, he sure wasn't. You went to his high school. I did, Long Beach Poly. Yes. <laughs> And then coming out of UCLA, wasn't a massive prospect. He was only a fifth round draft pick. And now he's one of the most important parts of the Titans defense, especially in moments like this. Big games like this, you look for Jayon Brown to make big plays. The reason he succeeds, the reason he's continued to get better, what would you say? Well, he just loves football. He loves ball. And that's the secret to number 55. This is what a boss do. If you look at Jayon Brown's social media account, in particular Twitter, you notice something interesting. It's a lot of football. There's a lot. There's not a lot of other stuff, guys. I mean, you, you retweet your teammates and you're supportive of various things. But it, you are football, 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 aren't you? I am. I Have you it. always been like that? Growing up, my two older brothers, they play football and, you know, always wanted to compete with them and show that I'm better than them at other stuff as well. But, uh, yeah, I'm just passionate about the sport. Do you think one of the reasons that you have come on the way you did is having a singular focus? Not to say that other things aren't good and that people don't have other interests, but you are laser focused on improvement. Oh, yeah, 100%. With this coaching staff, when they came in last year, they got they got on me tough throughout the whole this old OTAs and camp and throughout season as well. And I think it really helped push me to the next level. And I just got to keep that intensity on myself to keep on elevating each and every year. Brable ain't letting up on you. Not one bit. <laughs> What's your relationship like with him? 
It's a great relationship. He, he's a very tough coach, but uh, he knows I'm smart, so he's, he pushes me to take the next level. And it's really taking yourself, your job home with you. So after this, I go home, I do my study. So when I come here, I know everything that I need to know. So I'm ready to play. He coaches you hard. Sometimes it's, it's it can be tough to watch. If you've ever been a player in any sport and you've had a coach coach you hard to where they really get on you, that's not easy to see. Is it hard to not take that personal? Sometimes you uh, you can take it personal, but you know at the end of the day he, he wants the best in you, so you can't take it personal. Sometimes it did get to me, but you know you gotta you gotta grow up and you gotta you gotta know that he wants the best in you, so. You gotta apply yourself and, and then at the end of the day, when you do your job, you're not getting yelled at, so. <laughs> when was the moment that you knew that it was about the play and improving the play because Mike Vrabel loved the player? Where you got that he cared that much? No, 100%. Uh, all the guys know when he was getting on me, still does to this day, they, they know he cares and wants me to see me elevate, keep elevating and pushing each and every day in, in practice and on game day. So I just keep on applying myself to get to that next level. So what does he say to you after you intercept Andrew Luck in the season finale in 2018 and take it back for a touchdown? I think if, if anything, I don't remember exactly, but it'd probably be somewhere around good job. <laughs> you did your job and you know, that's what happens. Good things happen when you do your job. Okay. So what are your other interests? Besides football, Besides when football? you when you drop it and you let it go. Oh man, I love uh, watching movies. I do uh, puzzles in my free time, and I got my dog too. I got a Rottweiler that I uh, kick it with at the house. Tell me about the Rottweiler. She is. Her name's Callie. Callie. She because you're from California. Thank you. Callie with a K. <laughs> Had her for a year. She turned a year in May. I've yet to give her a little dog cake yet. I gotta find a spot. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Talk to Logan Ryan. Yeah, Logan, you're looking for sure got some spots. <laughs> Drop her off before practice. After practice, go pick her up. She sleeps for probably like three hours. You just run around with other dogs and then wake up, feed her, and we just kicking it on the couch. When you were drafted in the fifth round, fifth round picks are not guaranteed to make a team. I mean, that's just, you think they probably will, but they're not guaranteed. So when you not only made the team and then played as a rookie and then had the great year last year and you're in the, a much bigger role now and you're much bigger in terms of visibility, are you used to the attention? Uh, not, not at all, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've never really been in a, in a spotlight, really. And, uh, but I don't, I don't think I, I see it as much, really, because I don't go out much here at all. So just coming to work and going back home and relax, and so I really, I really don't get that much, and I don't get recognized really throughout the city. So I think it's pretty cool, though. Great to visit with Jayon Brown, and we're hoping he has another big game against the Texans in Week 17. Maybe he's Mr. Week 17. Oh, I'd like that. We'd That'd like be it good. too. All right. When we come back, we're talking adjustments, and we're talking Tannehill and adjustments. Ryan Tannehill makes him at the line of scrimmage, but it's Lauren Tannehill who's helped their family make the adjustment to Tennessee. You like what I did there? That was really, really good. Thanks. Very nice. We're back with more right after this. We welcome you back to Titans All Access, where we talk about a lot of the great stories with this team and one of the best ones from the 2019 Titans, Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. Since taking over as the starter, he's thrown 20 touchdown passes to just six interceptions, completed roughly 70% of his passes, and helped the Titans get in the position they're in now with a chance to make the playoffs with a win at Houston. For Ryan Tannehill, he says support is what's made him successful from his coaches, from his teammates, and most importantly, at home. Absolutely. And I was lucky enough to talk to his wife, Lauren Tannehill, and she says that making the adjustment from Miami to Nashville has been pretty seamless. She says that here they feel right at home. I think the vast majority would say transitions are tough. Change is hard. And for the Tannehill family, it's no different. After spending seven seasons in Miami with the Dolphins, Ryan Tannehill joined the Tennessee Titans. That means his wife Lauren and their two kids were also along for the ride. The community here is so good, like amazing. Well, we just moved here from Florida, but we're from Texas. There is an incredible community in Nashville, and I feel like they wrapped their arms around me and just made it 
really smooth. What started out as a football move turned into a great chance to experience a new city. There's hard stuff that comes with every life, right? But I looked at this as like, this is a really fun opportunity to live in Nashville and see what this community is about. And it has been so rich for us. With a new city comes new friends. Hey. Oh, good. <laughs> and through the Titans Women's Association, Lauren has found a group of women who understand the highs and lows of the NFL world. There's nothing like the community of women around you in the league, period. We all just kind of understand each other and there's parts of our life that only we understand. I think that's important for everybody in the world to have that, you know, to lean on each other. And I'm super thankful for, you know, our community in, in Florida, our community here. And I feel like it's really exciting that if we hadn't come here, I wouldn't have this you know, new community. For Lauren, this group of women provides more than friendship. She has found a group of like-minded women who enjoy doing the same things she does, including giving back. Just being able to get out and do some stuff in the community, and you're doing it with your friends. So it's like, it doesn't really get much better than that. And there's not a lot of other organizations in the world that do that. Like you're going out and you're doing good together with people you love. It doesn't get much more rewarding than that. Lauren Tannehill is investing in a new community with a new team and a new group of women and enjoying life as it comes. We're just stacking the boxes for these tables and then we're stacking on this table right here. And then they'll come, they'll come no, through good, the tickets good. and then we'll walk. What's your name? I'm Lauren. Brian and I both believe that God puts you in a specific place for a reason, and he gives you a platform for a reason to be used for outside yourself. And so I think that just using it to reach out and make a positive impact wherever we can is, is our goal, definitely as a couple. It's really cool that just because you have talent in like the athletic arena, people want to be around you. And I feel like that's like a superpower that you only have while you're doing it, so you, you gotta use it and enjoy it and make all the good difference that you can. It's so nice to have the Tannehills as part of our Titans family. Absolutely. All right, Mike, there's a lot more coming up in Titans All Access. Do you remember what those things are? Well, John Robinson comes later in the show to talk about the things the Titans need to do well to win in Houston. But up next... Beneath the Surface with Coach Mack. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Titans All Access. This is Coach Mack, game day color analyst for Titans Radio. Today, we're gonna to go beneath the surface to look at two touchdowns from Ryan Tannehill to Tajay Sharp and watch an extended play and a trust between a quarterback and a wide receiver that results in two very, very big plays. First play we're going to look at is third and one. Ball's on the plus 36 yard line. And what we've got here, we've got John who lined up outside for a man's own decoration as Ryan Tannehill brings him back into this real tight nine ball stack, three man stack. He knows he's got man to man defense here. So he, now he's going to run a roll boot action and try to look for a crosser coming across. The nine ball stack gets jammed up. They're looking for this man here just to pick up the one yard gain. Ryan Tannehill recognizes everything is jammed up now out of the stack, retreats inside, and so now Ryan Tannehill does a tremendous job of buying time, but keeps his eyes down the field, and then Tajay Sharp does a very, very veteran move. He sees the quarterback now is off schedule, so he starts to work back, he uncovers, Ryan Tannehill sees him immediately uncover, throws a perfect strike to him, and then it's all speed, Tajay Sharp to the end zone, now the ball game is 24-21, big, big play in this game. Second play we're going to look at is third and two. It's on the plus seven yard line, 753. We've now got man to man defense down here. We've got 11 personnel deployed on the outside. Once the ball is snapped, Tajay does a really nice job in here of running this sting route. Outside, starts to move inside. Ryan Tannehill looks back over here to AJ Brown. AJ Brown is covered. Ryan Tannehill does a nice job again, manipulating the pocket working back, keeping his eyes downfield, keeping the play alive, sees Tajay Sharp. We've got man-to-man -man defense here and they've got two whole players. In other words, they've got two people underneath to be able to double any inside routes. Ryan Tannehill trusts Tajay Sharp to get to the catch point. This throw comes off out of his hands. This is a missile. The extension, the reach by Tajay Sharp, that is a big time National Football League throw and catch to bring the game within three points. Come 
coming up next on Titans All Access. The general manager stops by to preview week 17. John Robinson has a look at the Titans' trip to Houston next. As Titans All Access continues with general manager John Robinson, can't really talk about the Texans in this matchup this week because we don't really know what the Texans are going to do. So as the Titans focus on the Titans, we'll talk with the GM about the things Tennessee needs to do well themselves. Let's start with running the football effectively, and that is a Titans tenant without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, it's been an important part of what we've been trying to do as a football team all year long. Um, you know, it starts up front with, with those guys getting into their blocks, moving the line of scrimmage, the running backs making a good read, finding a crease, getting downhill, taking care of the football. So that's going to be important for us in this game. Let's talk about using your weapons in the passing game, something that Ryan Tannehill has done well. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of production from, from several different guys, whether it's AJ, Corey, Hump, Tajay, Johnny, all those guys have contributed, the backs in the passing game. But we've got to continue to distribute the football around, identify where the coverage is, where there may be a void, find that guy, get him the ball with an accurate throw, and then do something after the catch. When the Titans have played good defense this season, it has started with stopping the opponent's run game. And again, it's, it's the opposite of what we talked about earlier. It's winning the line of scrimmage on defense. It takes defeating a block, knocking the line of scrimmage back, getting to the ball carrier, getting them on the ground, being sure tacklers. When the Titans secondary has been doing their best work this year, they have kept the opponents from hitting those X plays, those plays of 30 yards or more, very important on Sunday against the Texans. Yeah, no question. Those plays really swing the pendulum, changes the momentum, it changes field position. We've got to do a really good job of keeping those plays at bay, and that starts with A, covering our guy, and B, pressuring the passer. And when you talk about everything we've been discussing, we talk about what Coach Vrabel refers to as Titans football. Sunday in Houston, more than anything else, just got to play Titans football. That's it, and it's complimentary. It's talk, you know, you talk about running the, running the football, finding your weapons offensively, distributing the football, stopping the run, stopping explosive plays, and winning that hidden yardage game. We've got to be sound in all three phases. This is the third straight year in week 17. The Titans have played a win and your end game. It's a big stage, there's pressure. But in each of the last two years, the Titans have handled the pressure well. They have come out and win or lose, have played well. What's the key to doing that once again in Houston on Sunday, handling the big stage? Well, I think that's what it is. We, we've been there before. We've had players, you know, we've got players on this team that have played in big games. We've played in some big games this year. And we've got to play our style of football. We've got to settle down. Uh, we've got to make plays when they present themselves and, and go down and get a win. Absolutely. John, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Titans general manager John Robinson with us. When we come back, Amy Wells is back with me to talk about all the good news that has gone on off the field with the Titans in the month of December. Stay tuned. Titans have been everywhere in Middle Tennessee recently. That's what I read. Is that true? Oh, it's true. And we're going to show you right here, Mike. This is the good news. Check it out. Rashawn Evans and his Razor Foundation partnered with Backfield in Motion to host a Christmas party for 200 male students in Metro Nashville. The boys were treated to a dinner with Rashawn as well as given gifts courtesy of Adidas. Backfield in Motion provides low-income male students in Middle Tennessee life experiences to help them thrive in life throughout school and beyond. You know, this is what it's really about. This is why we play the game, man. To not only just, you know, be entertainers but inspire people. And you know, especially the youth, you know, these are the, the kids that are going to be, you know, the next, you know, elite football players, the next doctors, the next representatives of our, you know, our country. So you just want to make sure you try to, you know, put a good word into those guys there. Titans players head to St. Thomas Midtown to spread some holiday cheer. Merry Christmas, Titans fans. Johnu Smith, Kari Blossingame, Ryan Tannehill, and some of their teammates helped Santa greet patients and sang some Christmas carols as they walked the halls. We sang them some songs and they sung along with us and um, it was awesome it was it was great you know they were in great spirits it doesn't even feel like a hospital um, you know it just feels like we were just visiting some great people just having the relationship where we can come over here on a Tuesday and and bring a smile to faces and, and hopefully cheer some people up and and just share some great moments with with kids with parents uh, it's, it's a special thing Marcus Mariota and Warwick Dunn partnered with Habitat for Humanity to give two lucky families a home for the holidays these homes are brand new, fully furnished, and mortgage-free. We're just here supporting um, some of these families that are owning their first home. 
and um, it's really cool to be a part of. Motivates, um, very blessed to just have the opportunity to, one, get to know the family and, and uh, just really help sponsor it and uh, put some things in the house that maybe they need and hopefully they'll, they'll enjoy. Jarrell Casey and the Casey Fund teamed up with Pinnacle Financial Partners to provide 100 grade school students a shopping spree at National Toys and Books. The kids received gift cards and had the chance to do some holiday shopping before going to a pizza party with Jarrell Casey. One of the big, biggest things for these kids, you know, through this time of year is having people that can give to them, having people that, that touch their hearts and the Casey Fund and Free Hearts is trying to do that for another great year for Christmas and another great year of continuing touching these people's hearts throughout the year. Derek Henry made a stop at a local Burlington coat factory to make some holiday dreams come true. Henry paid off the layaway debt for customers finishing up their Christmas shopping. I thought it was a great cause for me to team up with them and you know be able to bless you know these people during Christmas time during the holidays and, and I was all for it. So as soon as I got the the the, uh, the call, I was like, yeah, I want to do it. Let's do it. Well, that makes you proud to be a Titan, doesn't it? Isn't it nice? Lots of Christmas cheer. Our guys doing good stuff. Absolutely. All right. So remember, Sunday, Titans taking on the Houston Texans. Game time is 325 Central, Titans Radio on the air at 230 Central. Amy Wells, me, our entire crew from Houston, win and the Titans go to the playoffs. That's it, win and we're in 325 Central time. I can't imagine any other place that you could want to be. Let's do this thing, people. Yep. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.